I'm sat here with one third of the Fearless Vampire Killers ahead of their show at Clubby Full Black tonight. How are you guys? Oh, gravy. Thank gravy. you very much. Gravy. Yes. <laughs> gravy and gravy. Yeah. Gravy and bisto. And bisto, bisto yeah. I'm about nice. bisto slash oxo, right? The now. finest stuff, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you're not even made up, guys. What's this? No. What's all this? Uh, this is just the granulated kind of, gravy. It's not really formed <laughs> if you yet. you look close, if you do this on your phone, you might notice that. Oh, no, this is. Just because I didn't wash it off yeah. yesterday. Oh, but we've got, yeah. That's, that's the best, that's the best just, type. It's dirty makeup. Dirty makeup. <laughs> yeah, I, I do it, I tend to do it like just before I'm about to go on because at some point I'll rub my eyes. That's fair enough. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's yeah. Rub it all off. Yeah. Why not? Now, you've been up and down the country already doing a bit of, bit of touring, of course. Yeah. So, how has that been so far? Has it been good? It's been big? Yeah, it's been really good. Yeah, it's yeah. been been interesting obviously we were in Europe most of this year but yeah this is yeah. what the fourth day in this tour yeah it is weird it's weird coming back from like playing like our last show in like we were in Finland and that was playing to like 2,000 people or something wow. and then coming and doing a show in Norwich to like 200 people <laughs> yeah is it's very different, different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's, it's I think it's better because you're playing to your own crowd and I think I prefer that intimate environment a lot more yeah. than the, the big. I think I like it more. Yeah, you get and it's the benefit of you playing to your own people. People know the songs as well, and when you ask them to sing, one they understand you because they speak the language, <laughs> yeah. and two they know the songs so they can sing it already. <laughs> which winner, makes winner. it much easier. Yeah. You don't have to tell them to jump; they just jump, and they just they know what to do. But I, I guess it'd be the same if they were our audiences on a big stage. It's just we've never played to our audience on a big stage. But I guess when we do, we'll hopefully enjoy that just as much yeah and that was on tour with black veil bride wasn't it indeed yeah, um yeah. i actually interviewed a few of the fans of black veil brides before yeah. and uh, your fans are pretty similar i've heard yeah. um so yeah that's cool um <laughs> and you've also got a social media to your fans how cool is that so how does that go down uh, what the the web's the social media site thing yes. yeah yeah it's good it's pretty um, good we have some there's lots of little treasures stuffed away in there for them. It's yeah. kind of, yeah, it's like a bit, like combo of like a little fan community and also just, yeah, like a sort of vault treasure trove of stuff, like old yeah. demos. And we make, you know, just constantly making stuff to go on there. Fantastic. You mean, usually silly and stupid, but, you know, yeah. but that's what people <laughs> enjoy most, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. I think they just, I think they like this kind of extra connection to us because, like, obviously they can talk to us on Twitter and Facebook and stuff, but when... It's a bit more of like an exclusive club, isn't it? Yeah, That's it's a kind cool. of weird creative outlet because we always want to do sort of, as I say, silly and sort of creative things. But yeah. I mean, if you put that out all out in the public, it gets a bit like you're kind yeah. of watering down what you're doing. But like yeah, fans sure. who kind of are on the similar wavelength to us kind of will, we yeah. well, we hope we'll get enjoy what we do. Like yeah. no matter what we like, just making short films and like little interviews and sort of yeah. episodes, podcasts and stuff like that. So. Well, it's fantastic, really, because I watched your documentary mm. and um, you said you started off with one fan and now you yeah. have a massive fan base. Yeah. So how does that go to, from one fan to this massive fan base of different fans? Well, it's it's just literally... Well, I mean, we've been a band for <laughs> seven years, so... Um, so, yeah. yeah, it's literally going every single town and playing that town as much as you can. I mean, we were really lucky that when we started... Um, me, a lady called Julie, who is our manager now, but she, at the time, wasn't a manager, but she helped us get on a tour with um, a band called Aiden, and it was only a few shows, but then we got friends with the singer of the band, who then came back in a solo act, and in fact, this this venue was um, the first venue we played on a proper tour, wasn't it? Yeah. And, um, and um, yeah, and from then, you know, we just toured a lot, and we toured all around the country, and, you know, we picked up a load of fans on that first tour with him, William Control. Um, and then you just build on that. Fans, they talk to other fans, you get in Kerrang! magazine, so people find out about you, and then, you know, it's, it's just, it's a very natural build. We've never had any sort of, except like friends and stuff, we've never really had any sort of, sort of monetary input into the band or major label sort of interest where we've never had a record label. So, yeah, it's all very natural. And that's, it's just literally just a hard slog. Yeah, we've fought for every fan that we have. Like, yeah, you know, which is good because it, it's it, it's harder to lose those fans that you've you've literally you've you've found all of those yeah. fans yourself. You know, but it means it's weird. It just takes a lot longer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. But you've also been Karang's band of your dreams, which is really exciting yeah. as well. How did that feel for you? Remember 
was that? We that were was the was band our first, the first introducing <laughs> piece here. It said, Meet the Band. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was yeah, that was really exciting. Yeah, that was really exciting at the time. And, um, yeah, but we weren't the band of people's dreams. <laughs> 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 you are now, guys, so it's fine. It's yeah, cool. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Yeah, I guess. We're the band of, so, of a very small area of the rock community's dreams. But, there you go. That's good enough, though, isn't it? Yeah, that is good enough, so it's good. <laughs> and, of course, you're going to be playing Download later, which you have played a couple of times, mm. and you've been as punters yourselves, so is it a nice to go back to that kind of festival? It's amazing. Yeah, it's exciting this time because this is our first time playing the second stage. Um, previously, we've just done the Red Bull stage both yeah, times, haven't we? Stage. Which last time we headlined, which is cool. But it's nice. it's almost nice to go up to the second stage and play earlier because one we just want to enjoy the festival well, as well Friday we kind of well, do it on like, the Friday like one of the first songs on the Friday yeah, the, then we have yeah. we have no yeah, stress yeah. after that you know yeah. we just kind of enjoy all the bands yeah. like, I just want to go see Muse and say that's one it's going to be cool because like um, we never like when we did Red Bull like it was like it was probably the biggest show we'd ever done the first time we did it mm. but from then you you then do lots of bigger shows do you know what I mean and then we crowned tour and stuff so we're quite used to playing to 2,000 to 5,000 people but with any luck on the second stage I think that gets up to sort of 10,000 sometimes wow yeah. I'm not sure if there'll be that many people there but I, I mean it's, it's going to be early big. but, but yeah, people it's gonna do early, wander in and have a look around so hopefully we just don't put people off too yeah. much in little corner. well last time you had to compete with Slipknot didn't you so yeah, you had a bit got, of a <laughs> we haven't got that this time <laughs> no. which is a lot nicer to be all fair of the, every, all of the reports that people said were absolute lies like there was there was definitely at least 500 people watching this it's probably at least yeah. as much as the first time we played if not more yeah and that was and that made us feel even better because Slipknot were wrong yeah. <laughs> yeah. there was this review <laughs> in a magazine and it said oh Slipknot are wrong but they no one's obviously told the three people watching Fearless Vampires or something like that and we're just it it ma- oh, I remember I remember he this said to, <laughs> remember the exact <laughs> 27 <laughs> people yeah. and that just made me so Angry. So do you guys have an eclectic music taste between you? Do you sort of yeah. share different music tastes or are you all kind of similar? We're similar but like you're into Ooh, quite different. Well, it's kind yeah. of we're similar but we're all broad yeah. m- music taste, aren't we? Yeah. I guess. We're all like, <laughs> all like kind of obviously like rock and metal and punk and that, but then like sort of funky sort of dance and disco yeah. stuff, I rap. We all have our favourites but yeah. we're also all quite like like minded to yeah. the other. Because you're already into Metallica and stuff, yeah. and like Shane's kind of into Metallica a bit, and we like watching Metallica documentaries because they always laugh. <laughs> but we're not like massive fans, but then it's like he's not really a massive fan of like Green Day and stuff, are you? Like Green Day, but you're not like a crazy. It's a similar sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's a similar sort of like he grew up on that band, and we grew up on Green Day, and you know Drew's into a lot of hip hop, and I'm I don't really not massively into that. Yeah, I like hip hop, hip hop, like my. I, I used to have to listen to it a lot because my dad's really into it. So when I was growing up, it's one of those things where when you grow up listening to certain types of music, like hip hop and soul and stuff like that, I didn't want to listen to it when I, when no. I then grew up. So, so yeah, I guess. And then like our guitarist, he's into some crazy stuff. Changes into anything that's off the wall and bonkers. Yeah. Basically, Spotify has changed his life because you get those suggested <laughs> artists, and the further you go down that rabbit hole, the more yeah, bizarre more. it gets. <laughs> so he's always listening to some um, sort of stuff like Penguin yeah. Project. <laughs> Give that a shout out. <laughs> our, our redheaded singer Kier, his music taste is anything that's camp and blitzy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, like Mika, it. the camp George, and the yeah. bear, George yeah. Michael, bit George. So when you write music, does all these different types come into it, or do you find you all generally stick to your no, genre? Too, too many types come into it. That was, <laughs> yeah. that was the problem with our album, Unbreakable Hearts, which is like a brilliant album, but people didn't get it because there was too many sounds going on, wasn't there? Well, our fans got it. Yeah. That's the main thing. Yeah. Which is and, good. And some and good magazines got it. Bad yeah. magazines didn't get it. Yeah. I didn't think that was too many. I didn't, yeah, yeah, we didn't think it was too crazy, but then suddenly everyone yeah, did. Everyone. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, we thought it was. We thought we'd tone down yeah, our we sound. We yeah. thought we'd like, oh shit, is that people gonna think it's uninteresting? Yeah, you know? yeah, we, yeah, we were really worried that we'd gone too straight, weren't we? 
And then suddenly we had a lot of problems with like yeah. trying to get record labels and stuff because they just couldn't understand it. Well. <laughs> oh, okay. Then we suddenly we were like, oh yeah, Maybe this is pretty weird, mad but, and weird. But yeah, but that's what we want to do. So yeah. which is good. Yeah. But I mean, the album's had a great success and you have some really good responses, which is really exciting. Yeah. And the fans have obviously responded to it really, really well. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, apparently these are the things it sold more in its first two months than the first album sold in its entire span up until that point which yeah is pretty good that was yeah that was a really good you know statistics don't often make you very excited but that yeah. was that was a good stat yeah like, that was really a good, good stat day yeah and I, I just think you know i personally think it's an amazing album so <laughs> Same, like, yeah. just put it out there. Yeah, it's a good one, up. guys. Go and buy it. Go and buy it. I dare you. Go on. So, in your preparation, how long does it take you to do your makeup before a gig? No Not time. very long. No, so. no. <laughs> I put it down to about a minute. Well done. That was wicked. Yeah. That was good. It's literally just like eyeliner. <laughs> Swap it up. <laughs> I try and spend as little time as possible because. Because I, because I, I only use eyeliner now, and I hate putting stuff in my eyes. Oh. That's the problem with it. I like doing it, but I hate having it there. So I just try and do it as quickly as possible. <laughs> Quickly get it on. Yeah. I saw Kia did a little uh, makeup tutorial as well for you. Uh, <laughs> I've even done a makeup tutorial. So fair play to him. That's good. Um, did you swap tips with Blackfell Brides at all on makeup tips? Or uh, no, I think, I think they, would, <laughs> they would own us on makeup. Wait, yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he wears a lot of foundation. Yeah, he's got very smooth, glowing very skin. They all look yeah. Particularly his, uh, Andy and Ash. Yeah, <laughs> they look real. Almost like it's a, a, a constant glow <laughs> to nice. the cheeks. That's nice, but that's a, good. But a sallow Wait, glow, so not a rosy glow. They're all dirty little scrubs. They're all weird. <laughs> We've got yeah. black running down the films. If he if he rubs his eyes, it goes everywhere. It's <laughs> it really hot and sweaty on the stage. I was about to keep it yeah, on. That's I struggle. That's half the yeah. reason as well why I stopped doing my hair as well. I used to have it huge. Wow, yeah. But then, just... then literally like after like the first ten seconds of the set, it's yeah. just sweat. No more. It's so rubbish. Like my, I'll do my hair and it'll be alright, and it's kind of nice and thick there. And then you get on stage and it just clumps into these really thin <laughs> strands, yeah. sweaty strands. One, like an old man. Mine just gets really wet and like sticks yeah. to my head and like separates so it looks like I've got a weird sort of cartoon head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially now because we play for an hour so it's like yeah. you're just like the amount of sweat like this is like soaked. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's nice. Like it's bit. beautiful. Give one to the fans. This is my sweat. Love life. Oh, well, <laughs> gave, gave some fans. What did you give them? I, we had to the Quran we had to give them a I gave mine, I gave one a shirt, you gave him a waistcoat. I gave him a waistcoat as well, my shirt was unwashed. Mine was washed. Mine was mine washed. Was <laughs> so what's the funniest thing or the most memorable thing a fan has ever given you guys or said to you or anything that you could remember? Mm. That's always they hard. Us, they, 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 they give us some crazy stuff sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh. one of my favourite things was a fan bought me the most expensive Nerf gun you can buy. Wow. Yeah. Not yeah. bad. Not that bad. was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Something like we guys. have a fan as well that gets, makes us, well, she doesn't make it, she buys it. Like yeah. Fancy liqueurs yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah. fantastic. But they're always, they're always like mixed and named after our songs. So like. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah so for instance, you'll get. I never know. <laughs> when it is, okay, it is. <laughs> like elderflower liqueur or um, vanilla it? spice. What's um, elderflower? It's in what song is it? In? It's um, a lyric in the song. Uh, oh, so it's in um, fucking diamonds, and, diamond dust, and crimson rain. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I can't remember. But it's a lyric. It's a, it's it's a big. It's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. The elder flower kiss. Yeah, it gets a really good one. That. Can we have one that tasted like Werther's originals? <laughs> <laughs> it like, like, I like it. Like <laughs> Yes. That's just because we so started nice. getting old. Like, yeah, you're getting old so now, nice. boys. Yeah, no, <laughs> 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 yeah. No, they're really, uh, our fans can get us crazy stuff. Like, really cool That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. But you've been extremely busy after your, obviously, a sophomore album, Unbreakable Hearts, which is really exciting. So have you, have you been writing anything more? Are you always writing? Or do you find when yeah, you go on tour, you kind of stop a little bit? And well, we do stop. We don't really write on tour. Yeah. No. Like, we don't get the time or the space, really, I guess. Yeah. We did, a, we had, went through a period of writing a lot 
before the second album, well, a little bit better, yeah? before the <laughs> second album came out, because for a while we didn't think it was going to get released, so we had a period like at the start of last year where we wrote a lot of songs. We wrote like 30 songs. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and, then, awesome. and then we kind of written be- bits and pieces around tours and stuff. We've recorded then, six songs, new songs, but we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, we we're kind of figuring that out because they were kind of we did them. As we wanted demos. to do some demos like, for people, but we wanted to do them the quality that you would release them. At, what almost. you find out in this business is, unless you give someone the perfect product immediately, they won't. It's just people the, don't. People in the industry are stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. They don't really have the imagination. They don't to have the imagination to work out to hear what, what a song what, is. And yeah. Then, so you spend a lot of money making the song sound good. And after they've said, yeah, this song will be good, so record it. You spend all this money recording it, and then they go, actually, it's not good. So yeah. you should always give them the finished product. The finished, the finished thing that's good. Yeah. And am I also right in thinking you're thinking of bringing out a comic as yeah, well? Because we you've had, yeah. this yeah. is exciting, and also you've had two novels as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. we had two novels. He writes all the novels. That's fantastic, it. that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's just I'm a geek. <laughs> <laughs> and you just enjoy it, it's fine. Yeah, I, do, I do enjoy it. Um, we've got a comic that... He's, it's from my stories, but he's writing the script because he's a geek as well. I'm a comic he's geek, specific he's a proper comic film geek. comic geek. So he's <laughs> he's writing the script, and we've got an artist who um, has already got quite deep into the artwork. Like they're almost a third of the way through, aren't they? Yeah, we've uh, they've, they're almost finished. Like. We've sent them, yeah, maybe about a third of a finished script, and that's probably almost finished now. We just yeah. need to finish but they were the like script, fan, really. Ah, oh, fantastic, yeah. cool. Um, and then they're we, really into that yeah. sort of the story that it was based on. So oh, that's yeah. why how you got the attention. Yeah. Of it, didn't I always you? say that they probably know more about Grand Omno, which is the world in which these books are set, in, than I do. Like. And I'm worried that they're gonna ask me some questions, <laughs> like when I don't have my laptop and my history. Of yeah, you, you can't I'm see. Just gonna say <laughs> stuff wrong. No, it's yeah, fine. but um, but yeah, no. But we've got some. Like, our fans are just so into stuff and so talented. And I think the best thing about this band is that we inspire people to create, um, which not many other bands do. No, they don't. Most bands just provide a diversion, whereas I think we provide inspiration and. Our fans really run with that. Like some of the artwork, just yesterday we got about six pieces of artwork from yeah. fans. And it's just some of the artwork is just amazing. I think it's lovely, really, because your fans are what, what puts you here, aren't they? Really, your fans are where you where you are. They start from yeah. the beginning and they follow you all the way through. I just think it's really nice. So it's, yeah. I think it's really nice. You put down that barrier, and you've just got the fan. You let the fans in. I think that's really nice. Yeah, that's something yeah. to take yeah. from it, really. Yeah, I think I think it's almost a necessity now um, to do that. But I don't. We don't do it out of necessity. Um, but fans are always saying to us, look, most, most bands don't s- spend time with their f- fans after the show. Which kind of weirds me out, because that's what we've always done, isn't it? We've yeah. always spent time with our fans. But, um, you know, I just think you can't... They're, they're kind of people, aren't they? So you have to treat them you as do. people. You do, it's very yeah. true. <laughs> so, so, they're not like a number or a digit or something, so you have to treat them as you would as anyone else. Which is sometimes really hard because sometimes the amount of guilt I feel, I accidentally let, left a letter <laughs> at the venue the other day and I felt so bad about it. <laughs> yeah. Because you, like this person's put everything into this letter and I, I bloody left it at the venue. So <laughs> it's like, Someone's going to find that, it's going to yeah, be nice. But I yeah. feel really, we did that once for some artwork, some really oh, good God, artwork. Yeah. And the worst thing is, oh, this is terrible. Oh, so, yeah. oh, so no. this girl, Chelsea, oh, she did this really good artwork on a on like a on like a piece of canvas. It was really good. Yeah. And we accidentally left it in the bath line canvas. We, yeah. hung, it up on the, we, we hung, hung it up on the wall because because we got it. We're like, this is oh, great. No. We'll put it up. Yeah. yeah. Have it. We left it at the venue, and the next day, Def Havana shot a music video, and wow. then a few months later, yeah. in Def Havana's music video. Her piece of artwork. Wow! <laughs> yeah, famous. So That's she, amazing. She then tweets us going, guys. Um, I think by that you... point we'd gotten it back. I think yeah. we came back the day after or a couple yeah, of days yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, and but, and we thought, yeah. But and we thought, yeah, we thought, all right, Scott Free. Yeah, oh, fine. Yeah, Got the artwork. <laughs> it's back. It's great. back. Yeah. But then, and then suddenly you're like, oh, 
yeah. shit. <laughs> there it was in the, in the Death of Anne's music video, and uh, yeah. That's a bit of the claim to fame anyway. Yeah. I'd be well chuffed. I'd be like, oh, fair play. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> a little cameo. I bet, yeah. they, I bet they, if they ever found out, they'd be the press and they found out it's a good Yeah. It's your fault, guys. <laughs> so finally, really, is there anything we can expect to see from you in the coming year? Is there anything more you're going to bring out or release? Or? Well, yeah. We want to release some stuff, but yeah, we just don't know how it's going to go, you know, basically. Yeah. yeah. So let's say we've got these kind of six songs in the bank that we're thinking about maybe doing something with. But we're not we're not sure, and we want to we want to work on more songs and record, like start yeah. recording for the next album. But that's that's just all boring logistics. Boring. <laughs> so we've got to figure out. And other than that, yeah, just well touring as much as we can. Yeah. We've got one tour with Anna K okay, who we're playing with tonight in Europe already planned. Exciting but, stuff. And obviously some uh, like download some other festivals. But we'd really love to do some more as much more touring as we could. Just because yeah. last year was bear we did two tours and it was re- it was just it was boring so we want yeah. as much as possible now yeah that's yeah. fantastic well best of luck tonight guys i'm uh, gonna be there so i'll have a little watch of you it'll be oh, really good okay. <laughs> sounds really good and yeah enjoy the rest of your tour and uh, go mental and pick up some more fans why don't you yeah, well, 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 why not? <laughs> get yeah. some more artwork in the well, music videos <laughs> fantastic thank you very much guys thank you cheers